Let's drop into a meditative state place together. So just softening and deepening your breath, letting your consciousness fill your body, fill your soul. Let it wander around in your cells, just saying hello, just feeling the healing. Feeling your consciousness deepening, expanding. Letting your awareness come to your heart center and feel the touch of spirit. Feel that energy moving up through your feet into your heart, down through the crown of your head into your heart and radiating out in all directions as we interconnect one with each other, one with Gaia and spirit, one with the healing energy that we have all created together today, this weekend. One with compassion, gratitude. One with the entourage and the love we feel from Cryon, the lover of humanity that honors our journey here and is here to provide us a reflection of our beauty and here to give us information and guidance in that love, through that love. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And so we celebrate the day. We celebrate small things. Celebrate joy and laughter. We have spoken of it before so many times. Is that that which is the energy of laughter and joy is sacred. And that you can feel it. It surpasses any other emotion except love that the human being generates. The emotions have physics. There are literally energetic waves that are absolutely broadcast from emotion. You know this, for when one laughs, it's contagious. Joy is this way. If you ever wondered if there's joy on the other side of the veil, it is indeed. It is a godly emotion. It is given to you. Dear ones, it's not necessarily because you have intelligence that you have joy. You can see animals have emotion. It is difficult to see them laugh at a concept. This is a godly, absolutely a God-given way that you can show that you have God inside. What I have tonight is short. And there is three things that we wish to discuss. And we're going to look at the difference very briefly between old and new paradigms. Before we look at them, however, I just want to make a comment. And for me, this is fun and joyful. <laughs> for there's a physicist in the audience. And I challenge him to find the rule of 12s. You are used to looking at all of energy and the pieces and the parts 
And I ask you to start looking at the confluence of twelves. Nature is in twelves. The DNA should have warned you about that. It's not in tens. The bias is for you to count in a base ten. Physics truly is twelve based. Now, not all energies can be seen and identified, but the reactions can to tell you something is there. And if you count it, you will find, to your surprise, that there is a confluence of twelves. It ought to tell you some of the missing laws of physics and what might be there that's going to then reveal and explain some of the things that you cannot see. If you examine the cryon lessons, you will find that most often we deliver things in threes, fours, and sixes. No one has really ever put that together. And we do it for a reason. That is the structure of everything. Not ten, but twelve. We present three things today. Easy and yet difficult. Dear ones, the difference between that which is what has existed and that which is coming truly is about paradigm shift. It truly is the way you see things and perceive things and react to them. Basic human nature will fall into a pattern that it is used to. And what you are used to, even as a healer and a light worker, as we discussed yesterday, may be a habit. It may be tradition. It may be something that you were taught. I want you to know this, that in the process of life, what is taught to you by somebody that you appreciate and honor and even love will etch itself into your mind as being somewhat sacred. And when things change and those things are no longer valid, some of you feel disappointed. Perhaps even there is a betrayal you might feel as you change your paradigm like a slap in the face to the one who taught it to you. That is a habit. That is an emotion, and it's not so. The ones who have taught you the way you should be or do or what works and what does not work in an old energy are respected because it worked in an old energy. And in the new energy, you become the teacher. And you have to start to learn to readjust your reactions and how you think. Three things. They start with the easiest one, belief. When you believe in something, there is an instant and automatic reaction. If your belief is strong, if it is something that is spiritual, you have rules around it, organizations, doctrine, actions, whatever it is, the first thing in an old energy you wish to do is share it with others. Now, what if I told you that's an old energy reaction? And that sharing it with others is no longer what you're supposed to do. Now, there is no real, true, right and wrong. There is just simply free choice. There is simply what works and may not work as well. So do not put it in the category, literally, do not put it in the category of should and should not. When I say you should do it differently, I mean if you want results, you should do it differently. But there are some who will continue to do it the old way only because it used to work. You would share your belief with others. You'd get together and you'd say, here is what works with me. Here's what I found out. And here it is. Usually it's something linear. You will believe this way. You will have a doctrine that says this. You will take the words of a prophet and apply it to your life. And it's helped you. 
And so therefore you are sharing. Now that has another word. You are evangelizing your belief, no matter what it is. You could be an atheist and evangelize your belief that it helped you. This is action from the belief. Humans share what they have found works in their belief system. Now, this is going to sound real familiar to those of you who have listened to me before. There is a new paradigm. And dear ones, this is harder, a lot harder. If you wish to share what you believe, it's time to take it inside and show somebody it works. Never tell them what you believe. Instead, you live it. And if your belief is indeed accurate and true, then the love of God will show through you accordingly. And the belief will be yours until somebody asks you, what do you have that I don't? This light you have needs to be shown to others by your actions that are practical. Do they see somebody who is balanced? Do they see somebody who is joyful? Can you have a situation where you walk through life and you have the same problems they do, except you do not go into frustration, anger, fear, and drama? And side by side with a co-worker or a family member or even a child, they would look at you and eventually they would say, what do you have? Because I want it. And then you can share your belief. The difference is one is linear and one is not. And if you see how this is working, truly now we are saying it's not about a linear process of do this, read this, go here. That used to be sharing your belief. And today you apply it to yourself and let the world see who you are. That, dear ones, is harder. But I want to tell you something. The results are long lasting. Because no one can argue with your mastery. <laughs> no one can argue with your balance. Especially if they see it day after day after day. And realize truly you have something that's worth asking about. That's number one. Number two, this is simply information about what is coming and how to treat certain things. In the area of the new energy and metaphysics, in training, in learning, we have told you there will be changes in systems. Now, the systems that are going to change are all of them, eventually. And we have told you over and over that the very paradigm of how you get your electricity should change. We've told you to eliminate the master grid, to be sufficient in groups of smaller grids so there'll be no problem if a grid fails. You simply go to the next smaller grid's house. We've told you that the technology is coming for this, where groups and neighborhoods can have their own grid, and they can have it easily and not expensive. We have told you about water. It's time to desalinate with efficiency, no heat, no chemicals. There are ways of desalinization in real time. Look for it. We even gave you hints of how it might be done with micro robotics. In case you can do this, the ocean is your water supply for any city. You can see the ramifications. You can even do it on a small scale 
we've given you all this. These are then systems of ecology. We have told you that politics is changing. We have told you that corporate business may change. We have told you that the pharma industry is so dysfunctional, it's going to fall over and change. All of the years, systems are changing. So the question then becomes from you, linear. What are the new systems? How do we do it? What are the facts? <laughs> Give us the inventions. What are they, Graham? What is the new kind of economy that we need? What is the new politics that we need? And you want a list. Now, this makes sense, doesn't it? You're going to need to do it, so there you are with your handout. Give us the list. What if I told you how linear of you? Dear ones, the systems are coming. And they're coming from those who are going to become wiser in the spirit. As evolution continues on the planet, these systems are going to come from those who invent them. You're not going to get them from spirit. I want you to start thinking differently. Instead of having conventions where you're starting to look to spirit to give you the answers, Instead, I want you to understand, to develop yourselves and those around you so that you have spiritual wisdom and common sense. Start looking to the young people and developing this within them. This is coming from the future, and it's become right out of the people that you know in both genders who start to become wiser in spirit. God's not going to hand you these things. We've talked about the coming inventions. We know the potentials of what you're going to discover because they are there. We know what they are. You're going to develop them. You're not going to get it from us. So why do we tell you this? Because there is a tremendous waste of energy asking us for them. <laughs> Instead, Start looking at the young technicians, the young scientists, the ones who are just coming along now with their brilliance. They have the answers, and they're going to have some wisdom you didn't expect. There have been a lot of brilliance and a lot of smart human beings in the past, and yet none of them gave these answers. And the difference will be the new energy. I want you to look to these for these answers and not to spirit. That's number two. Number three is similar. What is your path? Every single human being at some level who is spiritual is looking at what they should do. Literally going from A to B is something that you concern yourself with. What's next? What will I do when this or that happens? Where should I go? Should I or should I not do A or B? Absolutely practical. Totally understandable. There are those who would say, why don't you simply stand there and God will tell you what to do. We have told you that is not the way it works. But still you stand and you say, help me, I need something. When the human wants to go into unknown territory, the standard linear answer is get a map. Now the map could be a book. The map could be advice from a friend, even shamanic. That is what the human does. If you're uncertain about the path, you will find an expert or a map, a device or something that will give you an answer so you don't have to go into the unknown. Most of you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> For those who have not attended 
the weekend. This especially is interesting. For those who have attended the weekend, you already know because it has been discussed. The new paradigm is for you to launch yourself literally at nothing <laughs> and depend upon the wisdom of the moment and the synchronicity to show itself when it needs to. You race toward the fork in the road and you want a map to know whether to turn left or right. You have no idea which way you're going and you know that one way might be trouble and the other way might be salvation. And you need a map. And the closer you get to the fork in the road, the more frustrated you become that you don't have your map. Now that is the old paradigm. And in the new paradigm, you're racing toward the fork in the road, singing travel songs as you go. <laughs> because you're not worried. And the fork shows itself and you're still not worried. And finally, you're at the fork in the road and you have the intuition that says there's a fork in the road, turn right and you do. Until the next fork, until the next fork, until the bridge, until you reach the destination that you really didn't know you were headed for. <laughs> this is a new paradigm. It is a new reality for old souls. You're not going to trust the linear mind as much. Learn to trust the intuitive brain, if you want to even call it that. The human being metaphorically has three brains. Isn't it interesting? There's the three again. They are synapse, which you call the human brain. There is the intuitive, which comes from the pineal. And there is the heart. There actually on the heart, tremendous magnetic field, which you know about. And also there are nerve cells there that mimic synapse. This is part of the human system, which will be discovered profoundly. It's a triad, the three. So you are starting to trust the intuition, the heart, if you wish, and marry it with the logic of the brain in order to give you a complete picture, not a where to turn, but on how to react when you need a map. Let the map come as it does. You don't need to know in advance and you cannot. Dear ones, if the future is always moving because of free choice, there isn't anyone who can tell you what the future is going to be. Not really. It moves every moment of the day because there are so many human beings involved with free choice. Even spirit cannot tell you what day or year something is going to happen because we respect the free choice of humanity to change it. We have told you for years it can happen sooner or later, depending on you. This should tell you that when you start moving toward a goal, if that is what you wish to do, you have to go a little at a time and sense where the potentials are. Which way to turn will depend upon what is happening at the moment. No map is going to give you the future. Different reality, different way of thinking. These are the three. Dear ones, these three alone will start to balance you differently. There will be some who will question you <laughs> as you start living this new reality. Now, have you noticed young people? Some of them are doing it already. Have you criticized them for it? I know who's here. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You got to have a plan. And they look at you and they say, really? <laughs> We're going to know as we go. Know as we go. And you sit there and you say, oh, this younger generation, what is going to happen to them? 
I'll tell you what happens with know as you go. Peace on earth. Know as you go is the new paradigm. So, dear ones, congratulations for being at the right place at the right time. Before I go, look around you. That's family. You may never see them again, or will you? Might they have another face, another countenance? Celebrate them while you can. And so it is.